Hi, my name is Angelica, and I'm going to show you how to customize your logging specifications and how to review data in FlexLogger. FlexLogger is configuration-based DAX software for data logging, automation, and monitoring test execution. In a large number of DAC applications, it's common to log data throughout the entirety of your test. But if you have an understanding of the condition or the phenomenon that you're looking for, you can use trigger logging to capture only the most important information that you're looking for. Let's take a look. In FlexLogger, I'm currently in our logging specifications tab. The first thing that we're going to do is actually update our, fi our file name with something a little more meaningful. You'll notice that the file name is followed by a couple of different tags with reference to the year, the date, the month, etc. The reason why these are here is because they update dynamically every time you log, so that way you can be uh, confident or sure that you'll always have a unique file name. FlexLogger logs to the TDMS file format. This is a binary format that is efficient for high streaming data acquisition applications, and it also has a uh, inherently hi hierarchical uh, organization, so that way you can save metadata about your tests, including your sensor channel settings, as well as just descriptive information. One of the other options that we have in FlexLogger includes the ability to segment into multiple files. You can do this based on file size or based on the amount of time. This is particularly helpful for applications that are running for a long period of time because you can ensure that you periodically save your data, as well as help keep your file sizes to a manageable size. Another option includes exporting to CSV, since this is a pretty common file format. So I'm going to select that option here. I'm also going to choose to add some test properties that give uh, the viewers of this data an idea of what this test is about. So I'm going to choose to add the test chamber that I'm using. And I'm going to select for these different test properties to prompt in a dialog box when I start logging. This makes it easy to update these values every time I run my test. The last thing that we're going to do is set up our triggered logging. So in this case, uh, as a quick reminder, we're looking at a temperature set point and the light conditions of our system to determine when the fan turns on. We're going to use the same Boolean equation to determine when we start logging. I have a couple of different options, and I'm going to choose to select a channel value change. You can also choose to start logging at an absolute time in the future. So I'm going to select the channel value change of our fan enable calculation. And I'm actually going to choose three seconds of leading time, so that way I can capture anything that's happened right before uh, the event actually occurs. And then we're going to choose to stop logging when our fan enable calculation goes low. So now we're going to switch over our screen to see this triggering capability in action. So when I click Run, you'll notice that I'm prompted with a dialog box, and so I can enter information about the DUT that I'm using, as well as the potential chamber number of the simulated uh, environment that we're in. And when I click Done, you'll see that instead of uh, immediately starting to log, uh, you'll see that I'm actually waiting for a trigger here, and it summarizes the conditions that we pre-configured beforehand. So I'm going to increase the temperature by rubbing the thermocouple to simulate reaching our temperature set point. And we can see that a file has been created here at the same time as our fan turning on, uh, where we're seeing that increased vibration. Uh, one other thing that I want to draw attention to is the alarm that we configured for our light sensor. So while our temperature is still high, I'm going to simulate the lights turning off, which is another way to trigger uh, the logging condition to stop for this particular project. So now that that project has stopped based on uh, that condition being met, we can see here that we also have a CSV file that's been generated. FlexLogger uses a, a TDMS viewer to view your data after it's been logged and saved. You can change and customize different views within this TDMS viewer to uh, review your data afterwards. So I can take a look, for example, at my fan RPM, as well as my accelerometer information, and change my axis to customize a view that's easier to see for both of these different types of signals. So I'm going to change this to two y axes. And so I can see how, as my fan RPM speed is increasing, we can also see increased vibration from the fan. We can also take a look at the 
properties of the file as a whole, you can see this metadata information that we logged into our dialog box. So that's how you configure your logging settings and review saved data in Flexlogger.